I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Drew. Maserati Rick in Detroit Convertible bird in Miami Graduated summa cum laude Strip club made a tsunami Carlton Hines with the ball game Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes Craig Pettis in the M-Town Sal Magluta with the boat game Falcone with the cocaine Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game Like Monster Cody in South Central Larry Davis from Close Range Upon completion Chicago's in Chicago's Robert Taylor Homes became the largest public housing project in the United States. Built along two miles of State Street from 39th to 54th Streets in the Grand Boulevard and Washington Park community areas, the project comprised 28 16-story buildings mostly in U-shaped clusters of three, containing almost 4,300 apartments and 27,000 people. Within 40 years, this neighborhood was being dismantled. Despite the structurally sound exteriors of the building and an academic study that found two out of three Taylor residents opposed to the demolition, the CHA had demolished half of the buildings by the year 2000. The Hobo Street Gang is a reflection of the realities and challenges we're facing right now. This was not the BDs or the GDs with thousands of members. This was a faction of factions, an intimate group of members that came from those different gangs, but who came together with a common vision and purpose to be the most violent, ruthless, and feared street gang on the south side in Chicago. They terrorized Chicago neighborhoods on the south side for years. They dealt drugs, they committed robberies, including armed robberies, they uh, tortured victims, they killed rival uh, gang members, they killed rival drug dealers, they were one of their own and sought to cooperate with our investigation. They assassinated him in cold blood in front of his girlfriend, in front of his small children. Today's verdict does not right those wrongs. As much as I wish that it represented an end to the cycle that those kids described, it does not. But here's what it does mean. It means accountability here and today for these men and what they did. It means some small measure of justice and hope and peace for the victims and the families of the victims and those neighborhoods on the south side that were terrorized by these men. And it means a message, a message that society cares, that we will fight to bring justice and stop ruthlessness, that somebody is here to punch back, and so others be warned, do not go down this path. Uh, today is not a victory for the government. We win by doing our jobs. Um, I will humbly submit that it is a victory for the South Side and those neighborhoods that were terrorized by these men. And it is a vindication of our system of justice. It took a lot of time and hard work by a lot of people in law enforcement to make today happen. And I want to thank the Army. A lot of this investigation was Chicago Police investigation, and they have been and remain a tremendous partner to federal law enforcement in pursuing this gang as well as others. An unbelievable sense of commitment and dedication by the men and women of the Chicago Police Department to, to, make, to make this verdict here, here and today happen. So a um, lot, lot of uh, great work and effort that uh, was brought to bear uh, to make today's result happen. And I just want um, all of those different agencies and individuals who participated in it, and there are dozens, to know that we are grateful and that their service has mattered. It's made, it made a, a true impact. Um, as we stand here at 219 South Dearborn uh, today in January 2017. For days, the FBI searched for Paris Poe. He was armed and dangerous and in Madison. But where? The search heated up Thursday morning when security cameras caught him leaving a Nesbitt Road hotel. He had hitched a ride from Chicago where he's on parole for violent crimes and wanted for questioning in a gang-related murder investigation. Half a dozen agencies tried to hone in on Poe. Anyone who's armed and criminal in nature presents a threat particularly if they feel like they're boxed in somewhere, they don't have any way of getting away. Witnesses last saw Poe outside a West Side grocery store and recovered his sweatshirt there. Six hours later, police would pull him over on Highway 30 near Fair Oaks Avenue on the east side in a vehicle authorities would not describe. We don't want folks to get so fixated on a single vehicle that we're losing sight of the fact that he, he, 
he could be just about anywhere. Poe was traveling with a woman and had shaved off his trademark dreadlocks, but did not resist arrest, bringing an end to the hunt for Paris Poe. To a violent gang foothold on crime in Chicago if this case sticks. Nine reputed members charged with multiple counts of murder, robbery, and drug trafficking. Craig Wallace following the story tonight, and he is here with what are really some disturbing details, should they be true, Craig? Yeah, Robin, absolutely. The suspects are all reputed members of the Hobo Street Gang. Federal prosecutors say the Hobos Gang operated on Chicago's south side, originating out of the old Robert Taylor public housing units before they were torn down. All nine are charged in a racketeering conspiracy that centers on a pattern of violence and criminal activity between 2004 and 2009. Now, the racketeering charge outlines a gang which would literally commit any violent crime, up to and including murder, to protect its turf and its operations, and to punish and intimidate its enemies, and to make money. Six of the nine defendants are currently in state custody, but will soon be handed over to the feds. The remaining three are already in a federal lockup. One of the men, Paris Poe, made headlines earlier this year when he fled the state while under investigation for the murder of an FBI informant in 2006. A massive manhunt led authorities to Madison, Wisconsin, where Poe was captured the following day. Now, the hobos operated between 51st Street and 47th from Martin Luther King Drive to Vincennes. The defendants are all charged in connection with five murders, the solicitation of a sixth murder, along with four attempted murders, robberies, and a drug dealing enterprise. They all face at least 20 years and possibly life in prison. When we can make a case uh, with the U.S. attorney uh, where these individuals are going to get incredibly strict, strong sentences, I think it sends a very powerful message. Sure. Authorities said they hope this indictment serves as a deterrent, but people we talked to in the neighborhood who knew all of the men charged in the indictment were skeptical that the charges or the sentences would make any difference, although they were afraid to go on camera and tell us about that for fear of retaliation. A community activist hoped, though, that the publicity about the charges in this case might change some attitudes. It can make a difference in many ways that if a person is thinking about or going into the criminal activity or any organized crime, it gives them a second thought that they better think. Now, the U.S. attorney said today that four of the men, including Paris Poe, could face a possible death sentence if they are convicted of murder in the aid of racketeering. Robin. And, Craig, the, the time period covered in the indictment is 2000, uh, up to 2009, but in the last four years, I take it that they're not alleging these guys haven't been doing anything wrong as well. No, they haven't, but the racketeering conspiracy focuses on that time frame, Robin, because that's when the majority of these major crimes were all committed, including the, the murders and the attempted murders and whatnot. So all this conspiracy was during that time frame. They're not saying that things didn't happen, and this investigation does continue. All right, thank you, Craig. We'll yeah, 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 we back with us, your boy, Pablo Mob Ties. Headed back to the shot with it. Real fucking G's. When my niggas finna shot, y'all niggas get back in the comment box. Let it be known. Now, I've been getting requests for a long, long time to cover this organization that we're about to cover. I've been, did a little bit of my research on them, but then I went back and I fully, fully put my focus on it and did all my research on them. Man, man these niggas is wild. Honestly, the first reason that I went to take a look at the shit because the name just stood out to me. I'm like, wow, the, the Hobos gang. Let me see what these niggas all about, what they talking about. So by the time I start like fully checking in <clears throat> and locking in with the research and everything, I noticed that these niggas was on some wild other shit. The shit that stood out to me the most after I started researching it real, real, real heavy. I'm like, why the fuck they keep calling these niggas a super gang in Chicago? Ain't every fucking gang a super gang and shit? So that kind of intrigued me and led me to read more. And the reason why they, it looks like they call these niggas a super gang is because them niggas just had members from different factions and even rival gangs that joined them to one gang and it sounded like it might have been some of the notorious people from them gangs all my niggas from Chicago man get in the comment box and give me a little clarity on that well, did the gang just form all of a sudden but that was one thing that stood out to me 
the other thing that stood out to me, like I said, was the name. I'm like, Hobos. The only thing I knew of Hobos at first, where I grew up at, when niggas say, man, you're a hobo, or that's some shit sound like my, I remember my grandmother probably calling me that or some shit like that, and I thought it meant a bomb or some shit, but who knows, man, whatever them niggas said it meant, that's what it meant, because them niggas was on some wild shit, and I want to say the last thing that really, really stood out to me was, because I watch basketball, so I know a little bit with the sports, just sports in general. And a course a sports person gonna pop up in the story is a basketball player that went to DePaul by the name of Bobby Simmons. I wanna say he might have been in DePaul when Quentin Richardson was there. Uh, I can't even remember. But I think he's from Chicago too. He was allegedly robbed for a chain that was worth a hundred thousand dollars from I want to say the gang's hitman, Poe, last name. His last name was Poe. He was in the indictment. And when trial came, he mysteriously forgot. <laughs> the motherfucker forgot he got robbed for. He couldn't even remember if he got robbed for a $100,000 chain. Well, that's wild as fuck. Because the average nigga lose fucking $50, and that nigga talk about that shit his whole fucking life, man, I remember this time I lost my fucking $50, man, motherfucker, you lost a $100,000 chain and you forgot, nigga, got it off your neck and you forgot, oh, okay, I understand, yeah, um, but once you hear this shit, you gonna understand why you forgot, it's your boy Popular, Mob Talk.